Hair is often used as an expression of self, something we can control and use to portray our inner selves. This rings especially true in media, with characters often showing their emotional state through their hairstyles and colour. In a show such as Buffy the Vampire Slayer, which is rife with metaphors and subtext, a subject such as Buffy Summer's hair is prime for analysis. So, let's have a look at the Slayer's locks through the show's run and see how they reflect not only her personality, but her journey throughout the seasons. Tell me the truth. How's my hair? It's great. It's your best hair ever. We first meet Buffy Summers as an innocent 16-year-old, having just moved from LA to Sunnydale to start afresh. Her hair in the pilot episode reflects the naturalness of her character, and after we get to know her better, we discover that she shared a previous personality of an entitled and spoiled mean girl. A season two glimpse into her pre-Sunnydale long golden locks emphasizes this more organic Buffy Summers, who shows off her natural wave and darker color. It's my first day. I was afraid that I was going to be behind in all my classes, that I wouldn't make any friends, that I would have last month's hair. For much of the season, Buffy's hair remains the same, showing the stability and innocence of her character arc. The girlish curls show her fun and carefree side, and the darker, more natural colour shows that despite her protests at being a slayer, she is comfortable with herself and not yet searching for an identity. Buffy's most pivotal moment of the season comes when she sacrifices herself to the Master in the final episode. When she goes to face the Master, her hair is tied back in a ponytail, showing the outer control she is displaying as well as the stoicism that she shows in willingly going to her death. Once resurrected, her hair is not only loose but wet and dishevelled, possibly symbolising a rebirth or a primal resurrection. As she takes on the Master at the climax of the episode, her hair is loose and unstyled, showing a return to her natural, true self as she draws from her inner strength to take down her foe. I may be dead, but I'm still pretty. Which is more than I can say for you. When Buffy returns in season two, her hair is shorter than seen in the first season, signifying that she's growing out of her innocent persona and made more mature by her experiences. Hi guys. <laughs> Miss me? Long hair is often associated with youth and girlishness, and while Buffy still possesses both, season two is the start of her journey into a more adult world. She still maintains a slightly girlish look with the messy ends of her bob, and her more romantic looking loose curls signify her steps into her first serious relationship. I hear this place uh, serves coffee. I thought maybe you and I should get some. Sometime, if you want. In the episode Halloween, Buffy dons a dark wig, playing make-believe not just for the holiday, but because it's what she believes her boyfriend Angel, a centuries-old vampire, would like. This change shows Buffy pretending to be someone she isn't, and when the magic of the episode transforms her into the noble woman she's pretending to be, the dark hair becomes her real hair, showing her loss of persona and self. When the spell breaks and Buffy becomes herself again, she loses the wig but fights Spike while still in the period dress part of her costume, emphasizing her femininity, but also her renewed confidence in her true self. Hi honey, I'm home. Buffy experiences a huge emotional upheaval in season two, when Angel loses his soul and reverts to his evil persona and jealous. After Angel's transformation, Buffy's hair becomes not only straighter and more severe, but also bleached. Transitioning out of her romantic phase, Buffy's emotional state of mind is reflected in the harsh peroxide colour of her hair, removing herself from the girl she was when dating Angel. It is not uncommon for women to cut or dye their hair after a big breakup, with the change symbolising the new direction and upheaval in their lives. Buffy follows this pattern, with the change in the colour and the severity of the straightness of her hair showing that she means business in eliminating the threat of Angelus and trying to move on from her romantic feelings for Angel. My boy Copley here is about to wake up. You're going to hell. Save me a seat. Buffy's hair probably changes styles the most during the third season of the show, reflecting the change and turmoil in her life as well as the uncertainty of her future beyond high school. While she starts the season with her hair back to its natural colour and more organic looking than we saw in season two, over the season, we see Buffy try out many styles, including braids, ponytails, severe updos, and even crimped hair. 
The arrival of new Slayer Faith and the return of an ensouled angel sees Buffy questioning her place and her relationships. She is often contrasted with the dark-haired Faith and many scenes of the two of them show Buffy with a more conservative hairstyle, contrasting Faith's wild curls and showing how the two are foils for one another. You're actually gonna take orders from him? It's the job, what else can we do? Whatever we want. We're Slayer's girlfriend, the chosen two. Why should we let him take all the fun out of it? Buffy's changing hairstyles over the season may also symbolize her upcoming transition from high school to college and her fears over losing herself and who she is when said transition happens. Much of season three is given to Buffy's thoughts for her future as well as the changes she'll have to face and her many changing hairstyles reflect this inner turmoil. Right, you guys don't forget to breathe between insults. I'm sorry, Buffy. This conversation is reserved for those who actually have a future. Even more than season three, season four is a time of change for Buffy as she transitions from the safety and security of high school to the unknown world of college. She starts the season with straight, long hair, a blank slate, her hair unassuming and simple as she figures out who she is away from Sunnydale High. I know, I was just saying that to Willow. I mean, it's just so overwhelming. Don't you feel completely disoriented? Oz! Hey, Paul. Finally matriculating with us. Very cool. The episode Beer Bad has Buffy transform into a cavewoman persona after drinking magically spiked alcohol. And as she descends into a more animalistic persona, her hair becomes wilder and curlier, symbolizing the regressive state she's in, but also the loss of control she felt in the aftermath of her failed romantic encounter with fellow student Parker. I may not deserve this, but do you think you could forgive me? As Buffy starts discovering herself away from the confines of high school, she also enters a new romantic relationship with Riley Finn, and we see her start to experiment with curls, a callback to the loose romantic curls she wore during her relationship with Angel in season two. The return to curls reflects the romance in her current relationship, in addition to showing the search for self in that time between high school and adulthood. You really have a lot to learn about women, Riley. gonna teach me. Buffy's loose curls follow her from season four into the beginning of season five, showing that at the start of the season, she is still comfortable in her relationship with Riley and with her life in general. Season five sees her recommitting to her Slayer duties and taking on the responsibility of a younger sister. She keeps this loose curled style throughout the first half of the season, even maintaining it after Riley leaves, showing that she's holding on to hope and refusing to allow the breakup to have a traumatic effect on her. Maybe it's time to start a new tradition. Birthdays without boyfriends. It could be just as much fun. Preaching to the choir here, baby. It is only after her mother dies that Buffy reverts to her straight hair as she truly takes on the full responsibility of caring for Dawn and being the head of the house. She alternates between the severe straightness and having her hair pulled back for the remainder of the season, and this change is emphasized when Spike commissions the Buffy bot who has given Buffy's previous loose romantic curls. The contrast between Buffy and the bot shows how much she has altered over the season and the toll which her mother's death has taken on her. Hey, I know this. They're both Buffy. No, she's a robot. She acts just like that girlfriend bot that Warren guy made. You guys couldn't tell me apart from a robot? When Buffy crawls out of her grave at the beginning of season six, she has significantly longer and darker hair than when she died, showing the animal state in which she has been resurrected. The dark hair stays with her for the next episode, signifying the trauma she's experienced and her frame of mind because of it. Over the next few episodes, we often see Buffy with her hair tied back, pulled tight as if to symbolize the way she's controlling her emotions, along with the secret she is hiding from her friends. The fact that this secret comes out when her hair is loose only emphasizes this. So that's my refrain. I live in hell, cause I've been expelled from heaven. I think I was in heaven. Buffy's most significant hair moment of season six comes when she chops off her long locks after Spike sexualizes her hair. 
Cutting hair is a major trope in television and often signifies an upheaval in a character's life or a desire to become someone else. Cutting one's hair, especially in such a drastic manner, is often a sign of emotional instability and it can also symbolize loss of strength. Buffy cutting her hair is not only a response to her relationship with Spike, it symbolizes her losing her strength and power, both to Spike and to her ongoing depression. For Buffy, this action is a form of self-harm, as she seeks to remove herself from the persona which she perceives as weak and being taken advantage of by Spike. I think I can work with this. What exactly would you like me to do? Just make me different. As Buffy's relationship with Spike continues, her hair darkens, returning to the colour of the opening episodes, symbolising her unhealthy relationship with the vampire and the accompanying feelings of self-loathing and depression. As the season progresses and Buffy takes steps to better her state of mind and free herself from the relationship, her hair lightens and she ends the season with loose curls and golden hair once more, standing in the sun with a new perspective. I got it so wrong. I, I don't want to protect you from the world. I want to show it to you. Buffy starts season 7 with her natural colour intact, but her style has become more mature, reflecting her becoming the head of the house and her new position as guidance counsellor at the high school. <laughs> you didn't really think she's my... It's my hair. I, I have mom hair. No. I actually have heard of you, Miss Summers. You graduated from the old high school, am I right? Over the season, Buffy takes on new responsibility, becoming an authority figure to the potential slayers who are placed in her care, and we see this reflected in her no-nonsense hairstyles. If her hair is loose, it's often simply styled and straight, reflecting her authority and severeness, and when it's pulled back, it symbolizes her control and strictness. Her relationship with a newly sold Spike is a central point of the season, and in many of her scenes with the vampire, she has her hair pulled back, as if to symbolize the control she lacked during their relationship in season six. And it's not until one of their very last scenes together that we see her with her hair down, finally comfortable with Spike and with her relationship with him. Buffy goes into the final battle of the season with her hair loose but controlled, straight but with her natural colour, showing her no-nonsense approach to battle but also her trust in herself and in her battle plan. The final shot of the show has her hair looking more natural, loose and waving in the breeze, symbolising the freedom she now has after activating all the potential slayers. Buffy finally has a choice in her life, the freedom to do what she wants, and her loose, long locks help to portray this as the series closes on her final smile. Yeah, Buffy. What are we gonna do now? <laughs>